In this recording, I'd like to talk about one of the handiest features built into Access, and that's the Form and Report Wizards. You can create some pretty powerful reports and some pretty powerful forms using the wizards. And the, I think the most powerful part of it is to create forms with subforms. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in this recording. So I'm going to be using my pizza orders database. If you don't have it, uh, you should get a copy of it from my downloads. You should have everything in it you need. I don't think there's anything that we created in previous recordings. Uh, I did create all these queries, but I don't think I'm going to be using too many of them. So the first thing I want to do is create a, a, sub, a form with a subform. And one of the tricks that the book mentions when you're creating forms is to always select the object that you want to base the form on first. And then when you go to the form wizard, this first dialog box is where you get table customers selected. Okay, so from table customers, I want everything except the customer ID. When I create forms and reports, I don't use the customer ID. It's stored behind the scenes. Remember, that's an auto number field. It means absolutely nothing to the person who's using this. It's only used by access behind the scenes to link records, customers to their orders. So I don't like to show them. You can. The book shows them all the time, sorts by them, does all kinds of goofy things with them. But most people, humans, don't relate to ID numbers. They relate to names and phone numbers. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to do, and this is how you create the subforms, is to switch tables. I also want to include some information from my orders table. Right? And I haven't left yet. Right? I want to add information from the orders table. So here's some information, and this will be put in the subform. So you use your primary table first, in this case that's the customer table, and then the secondary table, customers have lots of orders as the subform, and what our form will show us is customer information, these first name, last name, customer phone number that we selected, and in a subform, in a little box down at the bottom, almost a little database grid, it'll show the detailed information for each one of their orders. Now I could include all of this, but I don't think I want any of this pepperoni sausage stuff, so I'm going to keep it relatively simple and just take the order date and the size it by there it is the size oops notice where I put them and the reason to put them here and you can't move them first the reason to put it here is because I had first name selected so I'm going to send these two back and make sure my phone number is selected because anything you click by double or anything you select by double clicking is automatically inserted at the end so there's my order date and my size I also want the coupon value that was used for each order and the order total so now I have information from two different tables. And the concept here when we do our report with a subform is pretty much the same thing. Right? It doesn't have a subform, it has kind of a sub-report, a report within a report. Same concept, you select the fields that you want from the primary table and then select the fields you want from the secondary table. Access usually gets this right, the primary table is customers because that's what I started with and then I'll see in a separate box all the orders. So that works. How do you want to see the subform? Data sheet is selected by default. I've never changed it. The two don't look a whole lot different. In tabular, it kind of squishes them together a little bit more. Uh, and this data sheet view also allows you to select and delete records. So that's kind of handy. Stick with that. All right, now I need to name these. Remember, in intermediate access, we have naming standards. All of our forms have a prefix of FRM. Okay, and this is going to be customer orders. Let's just do customers and orders. And this will be the FRM orders subform. So it always uses the table names at the beginning. Make sure you take those out. And the other thing to watch out for here is there's a space there. You might want to remove that. Oops. Because our naming standards say camelback, no spaces, etc. So be careful when you create these that you name them properly. And now we get to preview the form. And notice how, here's our field name, and here's the orders for Aaron Rodgers. And if I go to the next one, here's the orders for Adam Sandler, and it just keeps switching them all. Now my subtotal box is a little bigger. Notice the prefix that's put on here. We call this form orders subform. Access is smart enough to know you probably don't want the word subform in here, but it's not smart enough to remove the field values, I mean the, the prefix, so we need to rename this. So let's just go to layout view, pretty easy to do there. Click, click, and take that out. 
book suggests that maybe you just remove this all together. I want to align this with that. And alignment can be done in design mode. This is really a topic for the next chapter, Unit 4, but we'll get a little preview of it here. I'm going to select them. And then this can only be done, this alignment can only be done in design view. And then you can choose align from here, or you can right click either one of these and say align the left. And it will align them with the leftmost one. So if you wanted to move the phone order number over to the right, this wouldn't work. This is going to move orders over to the leftmost object selected, and that's phone number. I shift click these to select both. I also want the phone number this actual phone number field and the grid to line up. So I use the align button to the left and now my grid lines up. The grid's a little deep. I don't think I need it quite so big. So I'm going to use shift up arrow, also a topic for next chapter. The shift with the arrow keys changes the size. Arrow keys move things. I think I just changed a little bit more than I wanted to. So I'm going to undo until my, looks like I lost my phone number here somewhere. Somehow I lost my phone number. So let's just make this the same height as that. We can also do sizing from here. I don't know how I did that to the tallest. And then my phone number's back. And I now want to align it with this phone number field. So I'm going to go align the bottoms of them to move the phone number down. I think I restored what I had here. This is still too big, so I'm going to do, but now nothing else is selected. Shift up arrow, there they go. Okay, now I'm going back to layout view. And my title is a little funky, so I'm going to click on that and take this out. And the book, be careful when you're doing your homework assignment, the book will often have these as lowercase. Don't want that in the name because the name should be Camelback, but they have these lowercase. And then the other thing they don't do is resize these. Notice how deep they are. So I'm going to do my shift up arrow and resize that, and the whole header resizes. So that works out pretty well. Okay, we got rid of all of that. Uh, another thing you can do when you have subforms like this is rename these little record labels. This one's record and this one's record, but I've had rookie users of these, of these forms be a little confused because they don't know which one of these to use to move between records. To modify that, to make it a little easier, you select this entire object and then go to the format and let's see if I can find it. I think it's called nav or something. I might not quite be in the right place here yet. Let me switch to design view. It might be a little better. And okay, select the entire subform. I'm in the format. I can't find the property that I'm looking for. This property, let's try this. I'm going to go back to layout view and I'm actually going to click on the word record. And if I click on the word record, notice now I get navigation caption. So what you select is important. I must not have had quite the whole subform selected. By clicking on the word record, I did that, and here's my navigation caption. And I can change this to order. And then I can click on that one, but that one doesn't work quite so well. I don't get the navigation, but I did discover that if you click on this bar here, the record selector, the navigation caption shows up, and I want this one to say customer. And so you can tweak those to make them look a little better. All right, while I'm at it, let's go back. I think we're in layout view already. Yep. These are way too big, so let's resize them. I'm just going to click the entire table selector here, and then any column, double click, and it resizes them all. And then I like to resize this to fit. Right, and I just what you want to watch out for is that you don't get a little scroll bar down here at the bottom. If I go too far, notice now I got a scroll bar. I don't want that. So I'm going to do a shift right arrow to make it a little bigger until that scroll bar disappears. Now, one caution, if you have a person with lots of orders, like we have room for six here, if you have somebody with a seventh order, it will be scrolled off of this box, and the scroll bar will come in here and start covering up your order totals. I don't have that many, but if you did, you might want to leave a little room here for a scroll bar. I would navigate to that person who has seven where the scroll bar shows up, and then that way you can pull this in and size it just right. Now, for me, all I need is this. So let's just select these one more time. 
resize them, make sure I don't get the scroll bar. There we go. So those are nice and sized. And the last thing we can do to spruce this up a little bit is add a title to our logo or up here. Uh, anything you put up in the title bar is called a logo. Best thing to put up there is a logo. So I'm going to go to Design View and I'm going to add a logo. And I just happen to have a picture that should be in your student files on my desktop. It's not finding it. Did I get rid of it? Um, might have. Let me pause and load it back up again. Here. All right, let's try that again. I think I have my picture loaded, so I'm going to go to the logo. And now I'm on my desktop. And where this picture is doesn't matter. You can just navigate to it. And right, here's my pizza man. And if I open that file, it brings them in and sizes them to fit inside your header. Now that's kind of small. The other thing it does is it attaches him to the layout. And whenever you create these forms without a wizard, like the titles, they get a layout. And this thing just does not want to move very well. I want it to have it. It's too big. And it does. Easiest thing to do is right click it, remove it from the layout. And now it's just this picture. And it made it fit, so I'm going to shrink a little bit, and I'm going to make it a little taller. So I can see my pizza guy. There we go. Right, and move him over, and might as well shrink the size so it's exactly the same size he is, or at least pretty close. And there's my pizza guy, and that's a logo. And now the next thing we're going to do is a report with sub-data like this, and we'll add an image to that that'll be a little bit bigger. You could add a picture. That's this button. Oops. This is this button. Could add a picture and then put that in, or insert image, put that in my form, and it'll be a bigger one. But I don't usually put those in forms. We'll save that for reports. Okay, so that thing's done. It's a good way to create forms. We also did a little bit of customizing with subforms using the wizard. I'm going to save that and put it away. And now I'm going to create a report using the wizard and it's also going to have sub data and basically have a report that does the same thing as that form shows me my customers and shows me the orders that they've placed so i'm going to use the report wizard and this should look pretty familiar i had table customers selected i want everything except the customer id but remember when we added fields we forgot to move down so because i moved the customer id back make sure you select the phone number then go to orders and once again, I want the date and the size. And let's see, anything else here? Whether they ordered a soda, just to make this a little different, the cheese sticks and the coupon and the order total. So a bunch of stuff in my report. But again, from two different tables. So Access is going to set this up in a report that has primary customer data. And then underneath the customer data, it will show each of the orders, this information for each of the orders that their customer has placed. And again, you can add more. I almost never put the order ID in. The customers are already at the top of the report, so I don't need to include that. And I've chosen not to include any of these uh, topping stuff. But you could. All right, again, as it was in the form, wants to know who's the primary table, customer table, sounds good. All right, and then it says, you want to add any additional grouping. Now, none of the examples, I don't think there's any examples in here that can and have different groupings. Right? If I wanted to, I experiment with it, but I don't have enough data, I could also group by size. Right? I'm going to put size in here, and then within customers, it'll group all the pizzas by size, and we'll see all the large orders and then all the small orders. And all. But I don't have enough data. This really makes the report a little more cluttered. But if you wanted to, you could add another grouping level. I'm going to pull it back out. Right? For each of the detail records, that's the orders. Okay, how do you want them sorted? I want them sorted by order date. Descending. Right, notice you just click on these buttons to toggle them to switch back and forth. Right, and another thing the book doesn't talk about is you can include summary options for any statistics for any numeric fields that you have on the form. So I'm going to click that and notice here I can pick what statistics I want to see in my report for each customer Give me the total of their cheese sticks, coupons, and totals. We could calculate the average. We could calculate the min. Let's change the coupon to the average just so we could see it. Okay. And then you can include those statistics in your report without you having to manually add them in there. The book doesn't talk about it, so I think it comes in very handy, though. 
So that was a separate button that to me, it seems like this ought to be its own dialog box. I've sent my email to Bill Gates. He's still not listening to me. He still hasn't done that, but it's kind of hidden here. Next, I, how do you want to lay this out? Book likes outline. Uh, our report isn't terribly wide, so I think we'll stick with portrait mode. And we'll make each field just wide enough to make sure it still fits on the page and we can adjust those. All right, what do you want to call the report? We're going to use RPT, customer orders. Notice there's no subform here. It's all part of one report. It's not two different forms. It's not two different reports. Okay. All part of the same report. So there's only one name to worry about. And here's what the report looks like to start with. Not too bad. Here's a size. I don't know why it's got a border around it, but it does. And here's some stuff it put in because of our totals. Here's our totals. Okay average and sum and those are all lined up kind of funky but that's not too bad we can live with that right. averages right. but this line here bothers me and so now let's do a little bit of customizing here as well so we'll close print preview reports come in print preview mode report or forms come in just a preview mode okay or form view once again we can change title match and here's all that stuff here's the size maybe the reason that in the report the size has got a border around it is because it's coming from a combo box all right we have built into our table design we did that way back in unit one we included a lookup for size and so that may be why this has a border so I'm going to select the size here's the format and let's, here's its border style, it's solid, I'm going to make it transparent so there's no border, it kind of matches the rest. Here's that summary command, that it's a label, we really don't need it, so I'm going to delete it. Note that a report comes with different sections, a form did as well, but a form only has three. A form has a header and a footer and a detail section. <clears throat> a report has a report header and a page header, so if you have a multi-page report, you can have certain things show up on every page. Right now, there's nothing in there. Then for every customer, we see this information. And here's their details for all of their orders. And then for every customer in their footer, we have oops, all of this information. Right, and I'm going to try, I'm going to drag a box around all that, select it, press the up arrow, and move them up a little bit, okay, shrink the size. A lot of this we'll discuss in the unit on custom, um, custom reports. Then there's a page footer that appears on every page. That's the date. That's the page numbers. And then finally, there's grand totals for all of these uh, sums that we have. So if we go back to report preview mode, and there's buttons down here that we can use as well. Report view, print preview, etc. You can use those in case this button isn't available. But I'm going to go to print preview. And things are looking better already. I got rid of that border, but that's awful big for the columns. So in the book, they'll teach you how to resize some of these things. We'll just give it a little start here. Uh, here's the size column. It definitely doesn't need to be that big. Okay, so we'll shrink it down to about there. That might be a little too much. Personal needs that much room. And all the rest of this is pushed over. Right. Best way to move all of these is together. So I'm going to try to select them all. Let's see if I drag a box like this if I get them all. I do. But remember, there's also some totals down here that I want to move as well. I want them to all to stay lined up. I shift click those. So I dragged a box around these. Anything that you touch gets selected. And then shift click adds and removes things from the selection. And I can use my arrow keys. I could use the mouse and drag them over, but then you're very likely to move them up and down as well. I just want them to go sideways. So there we go. And go back to print preview. And there's a page, but notice that this person, Alfred Pliska, is split. Book doesn't cover this, but I think it's an important topic. It's good to keep groups like this from splitting across the page. So this is page one, and Alfred Pliska is splitting over that page. So I'm going to go back to my layout view. And I'm going to show a different section here that's not currently displaying. And here it is, grouping and sorting. 
that does is opens another little pane down here at the bottom and it shows me my groups and my sorts. I'm currently sorted by order date. And if I click on that, I can see that it's newest to oldest, so it's descending. I can change it. On my group, I can see that once again there, I'm sorted by customer ID. I don't know if I can change this as the group by customer ID. All right, so I can't really change the way that's sorted. But what I can do is sort this in a different way. So, this, so that the Z's or the, the lowest, most recent customers show up first. What you probably want to do, if you want to sort this by last name and first name, is you're going to need to create a query that includes a lot of this information and use that as the foundation for your form. But that's not what I'm talking about. I want to keep that group together. It's under more. Do not keep this group together on a page. Let it split. If you've got hundreds of orders per person, then this may not be a great idea, but I don't. I want to keep my group together on a page. So the header and the footer, all that for this group of person, a customer, and all their orders will stay together on a page. Let's go back to print preview. If we go to the bottom of the page, there's some extra space because Pliskus can move to the next page to keep them together, keep him and all his stuff together. The other thing I don't like here is all the different shading that's going on here, so I'm going to remove some of the shading. Some of this is alternate rows, and for the pizzas, that's not too bad, so I think I'll keep those. Okay, but what I don't like is that there's the customer who's changing, so the background, that's an alternating uh, customer name to, so that you can see when a new customer starts. I think that's annoying. I like it when I with the customers. I don't need this anymore, so I'm going to close it. No, close it, not delete it. There we go. And I'm going to go to layout view, and I'm going to click this top part of the form here, bring up my property sheet, and I'm going to be looking for the alternate background color. There it is. It's been set. Right? And I don't want an alternate background color. So I'm going to set that to none. And notice already in print preview, all of my customers now are all in white. So I can scroll down, and I kind of like it for the pizzas, but notice my footer for each customer is still alternating. I don't want that. So I'm going to click on that part and again change it to none. And now I think my report's going to look pretty good. So there's a lot of customizing you can do here. I left this gray bar so if I have lots of orders, they're different colors. It makes them easy to distinguish one order from another. You could remove that using the exact same technique. You click on that line and then you go over and remove the alternating colors and just have this one color all the way around. Kind of like these boxes. If you didn't like them, you can remove them. There's all kinds of things you can do. I also mentioned that you can add a picture to a report. You could add a logo like we did to our form up here, but what I'm going to do instead is add a picture to my report, to my page footer, so that the picture shows up on every page. So I'm going to go into design view where I can see this better. And here's my page footer. The date doesn't need to be quite that wide, so I'm going to shrink it. The page number doesn't need to be quite that wide, so I'm going to shrink it. And now I'm going to go into design mode, and I'm going to drop this list down here. And this is the one that inserts, uh, take it back, this one inserts an image. All right, so I'm going to click. I get a mouse cursor to changes. Where do you want to put it? I think I want it down here lined up with all this other stuff click and it's going to ask me which picture. It remembers where I was last time, so there's my pizza man again. I'm going to bring him in. And now he's full size. That may be taking up a little too much room on my form, so I'll select him. And if you hold, let's see if that works. In many programs, if you hold the shift key down while you're dragging one of the corners, I really want to get this one, see if I can get it. There it is. Hold the shift key down. It'll prevent you from, in this case, it's preventing me from going sideways. I think that's not what I want, so I'm going to let go. And he still looks pretty good. So notice how I can distort him and make him squish, but he's not being distorted. Access is keeping his shape the same. So I'm going to stack him all the way up here. And notice now I've got extra space on my footer. That space will actually be used, so you got to be careful. Bring that all the way back up, and if I go too far, it stops, because i got to have room for the pizza guy. And one more time, if we go to print preview, Go to the bottom of the page, we get page numbers and our logo. Go to the next page, we get page numbers and our logo. Okay, and so you can add pictures. Be careful, do not add pictures to the details view.
unless they're very small, because that picture will be repeated over and over and over again for every single record. So here in my detailed view where I have all these orders, if I added a pizza guy picture to this, it would show up for every single order. So it would show up here and here. It gets repeated over and over and over again. Very common mistake. Okay, so that's how you create forms and reports that show subdata. Just make sure that the key is use the wizard. Second key is when you're selecting your fields, select them from two different tables or queries, or for that matter, even more. It just complicates things. Usually it's two. Hope that helps.